grandmoms, daughters, dog moms, cat moms, and plant moms to this very special Mother's Day paint party. Hey. I'm so excited to be back here again. My name is Sheep, and I am a partista or party artist here on the beautiful island of Maui. Today, though, I am located at a top secret beach location, as that is something special I share in common with my mother, a love for beaches. <laughs> Today, we will be painting an extra special beach debut called Secret Cove, an art by Sheep original. Now, it doesn't matter if you have any experience painting or if you have a lot of experience, this is all about having fun. I guarantee you can do this painting. Uh, please watch this video at your own speed and pace. Pause when you need to, pour a drink, put on some good tunes, dance around a little bit, and just make sure to have a whole lot of fun. And now it's time to introduce you to our paint party supplies. And to do so, I have a very special friend with me today, Mr. Vincent Van Clownfish. Mr. Vincent, can you take it away? Alrighty guys, here we are set up at our paint station and I have Vincent Van Clownfish with me. Vincent Van Clownfish, are you ready to party? Definitely. Awesome. So let's go over our paint supplies before we get started. If you're already set up, maybe just fast forward through this part. Um, so of course we have our canvas. Canvas is great. Canvas board works, works great. Wood. Um, if you have paper, I'd recommend using an all-purpose painting paper. Or you could just, you know, paint your friends if you want. Um, you also are going to want to have some oops, practice paper. I like to use practice paper sometimes to do little elements like the trees and stuff before I start. You're going to want, let's see, some brushes. So the first brush I'm going to use for the background is this brush right here. This big brush, it's called a flat brush. So you want a large, large sized flat brush. We're going to be using this mostly for the background. You're going to also want to use a medium sized flat brush. So we have one right here. This is a medium flat brush. Also, one of my favorite brushes to use. You're going to want like a medium sized round brush, medium sized round brush. But honestly, if you don't have these exact brushes at home, you can improvise. But these are pretty standard brushes to use for any painting. They're great ones to have. Um, also, you're going to want a cup of water. I like to use a mason jar so I don't tip it over. Um, this is for keeping your brushes damp. So um, usually when I'm doing a painting, I just leave those brushes right in that cup of water. They tend to dry out fast if you don't rinse them right. Also, because you don't want your brush to ever be too damp, you're going to be using some napkins. Make sure you have some paper towels or napkins. Don't use toilet paper. There's a shortage right now. Um, <laughs> let's see, you're going to want some paint palettes. Now, paper plates work fine, but if you're going to really get into painting, I'd recommend um, getting some of these guys because they're reusable. It's kind of fun to peel the paint off them. I usually keep one for my paint and then one for my mixed colors. Yes? Speaking of, you're going to want some paint, right? So let's see, today we're going to be using black, white, I like to use a light brown, this is burnt sienna, a darkish yellow color, like deep yellow, cobalt blue, and a dark green, this is phalo green. Um, let's see here. Also, I like to use um, a little bit of this pinkish color. This is permanent rose, but any shade of pink, light or dark will work really well. I like to add a little bit in the sand if you want your sand to be kind of pink toned. And of course, you're going to want your apron as messes do happen and it's kind of fun to make a mess. And don't forget your favorite beverage of choice and your friends. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and get this party started. All right, so the first brush we're gonna start with is our large sized flat brush. So go ahead and grab it, give it a rinse, grab your paper towel and you wanna kinda squeeze it through your paper towel. All right, and you're gonna grab two scoops of white and go ahead and put it on your um, palette you have ready for paint mixing. So when you grab a scoop, it should look like this. Pretty big, right? Should almost fall off your brush. So let's grab two scoops of white. You're gonna grab a half scoop of your light brown. You're gonna grab a half scoop of your yellow. And let's grab like a 
very small half scoop of your pink color, if you have it. Again, you don't necessarily need that. And then you're gonna mix it together. And I have some of this color already mixed to you. I'm gonna hold it up to the camera here so you can see. So you can see. It's a nice kind of almost fleshy tone. And play with this. It doesn't have to be perfect first. Just use little bits at a time of paint until you have it where you want it. And you can always do a little test before you get started. No need to over mix. You can always mix more. Now, after you have mixed your paint though, you wanna always rinse out your brush before you start and wipe it through that paper towel. And let's dip into this color. So we're gonna make some dots and we're gonna connect them. From your bottom left corner, go ahead and move up maybe about like four to five inches or in Maui we like to use our shakas. You know, it's like hanging loose. So you can throw your shaka up, take, make a measurement and do a little dot like that. Perfect. And that might be a little hard for you guys to see. So I'll hold my brush up right about there. Um, in the bottom right corner, you can go ahead and just do a dot. And then we are going to do one more dot. From your bottom left corner, let's move along this bottom edge about like four inches or so, and then move up until you're like an inch higher than your first dot and do a third dot. So that's right about there. And we're gonna connect your left dot to your top dot. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're not gonna see this at all. And then you're gonna go in and out, like you're making kind of a, a loop-de-loo or a backwards S shape. Or it almost looks like a wave or a nose if someone's laying on the ground. <laughs> Whatever helps you visualize it. Okay, we're gonna just fill it in real nice and easy. So keep that brush nice and damp. And use those long brush strokes. Little short brush strokes don't work as well. If you want something to be smooth, all you gotta do is keep your brush damp and use long, long brush strokes. If your brush is ever grabbing at that canvas, wood, whatever, like this, you're gonna wanna um, get it a little more damp. Always wipe it out so it doesn't start dripping down your canvas and reload paint. And there, it should just easily glide across. Now, if you're at home painting on wood or something, you're gonna notice that uh, you're gonna have to use a lot more paint. So maybe uh, mix a little bit more paint if you find after this step that you didn't quite have enough. And keep your brush nice and damp. All right, fill it in. I guess if you're painting on paper, you'd wanna use a lot less paint. This is a 16 by, uh, 12 by 16 canvas, by the way. That helps you at home. Okay, all right, so we have our little weight. So um, I like to take all these colors we added in and kind of streak them back into my sand. Um, this is a good way to kind of play with the color that you painted originally, or if you want to adjust it. So you could take any of these colors. You could use white, brown. I'm just using little tiny brush strokes. You see that just kind of normal, like, or scattered around. Yellow, and maybe even a little bit of pink. And then with a nice damp brush, you're just gonna blend over the top just a couple of times. We wanna leave it streaky. Now again, you can use all of these colors, but if your sand felt more or like really yellow to begin with, you don't have to add in more. If it feels like it's too uh, dark, maybe you don't add in more brown. Um, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more pink. I like to keep this beach kinda on the pink side. You ever taken class with me before, you know, I'm always like, more pink, more purple. But if this is supposed to match a certain area on your wall or something like that, then maybe you wanna adjust your sand color to match wherever you're putting this painting by. All right, was that not easy? We're already done with our beach. So let's rinse out our big brush. We're gonna keep painting with this one. And we are gonna move to our sky, okay? So rinse out your brush, squeeze out water through your paper towel, and we're gonna use some white paint again. So let's grab, uh, let's do three scoops of white this time. Two, three. Again, I'm using my brush, now I'm hiding here, but kind of like a shovel. So I got three scoops of white. And then uh, to those three scoops of white, you're gonna add a little tiny dip of blue. Don't overdo it, a little bit of blue will darken it really fast. We're going to be adding more blue in later. We want to keep this color nice and light. I think I even overdid a little bit. So I'll add a little bit more white. 
little bits of paint at a time. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's see. Can you see this color? Something like that. Always rinse out your brush before you start. Wipe that water out through your paper towel. I'm already making a mess. That's why we make the boyfriend go fishing when I film these. Okay, can't know. All right, so let's dip into this. New colors. So from where sand bank ends, we're gonna go up maybe like two-ish inches. Let's go up like two-ish inches. That was more like three, but that's okay. We're gonna place it off. And we're gonna follow that dot over to the right edge of our canvas. Now, you can use your brush as a guide if you're trying to get a straight line. Know that we will fix it later. This is our horizon, but we will be changing it a little bit later. So it's okay if it's not perfect. It's always okay if it's not perfect. All right, one long brush stroke, I've connected the dots. Now let's fill in all the way to the top. Long brush strokes once again. Um, so I, a lot of times when I'm painting on a canvas like this, I like to paint on the sides of the canvas because that just makes it look a little bit more finished and then you don't necessarily need to frame it. Although you can frame it, it'll always look, make it look even nicer. Um, I'm painting on the sides just to save time, which is usually a, <laughs> a no-no. But go ahead and paint all around. You know, I, this is just a personal preference. You don't have to do this, but I prefer to paint the sides of my canvas first, and then I kind of fill into the middle. That helps um, with the smoothness of the paint. Otherwise, you might get a lot of weird brush marks if you kind of finish on the sides. Okay, so this is a good step to talk to you a little bit. I ran out of paint. I didn't mix that much this time. I'm trying to be generous, or not too generous, rather. So if you ran out of paint and you have just a little bit of area left, what you can just do is just get your brush damp, tap it out, and now if I just focus on those areas as long as I'm moving fast, that paint will kind of spread out for me. And it's okay if it's kind of blotchy because we're gonna be streaking in more colors and adding clouds anyway. We're just getting a base right now, that's all we're doing. All right, so we have our base. So now, if your brush is damp, you don't have to rinse it out because we're gonna be using just straight blue. I'm gonna add a little bit of a tint to the top of the sky. So I got straight up blue. Let's get this netting out of the way. And I'm gonna start at the very top, and I'm gonna use long brush strokes back and forth. Long brush strokes, and I'm gonna blend a little bit of that straight up blue into the top couple inches or so. Start at the top, and then when you've brought it down as far as you want, just keep working it in. And you'll start to get a nice middle color. So I'll kind of blend this guy out for you. Wow, very nice. If it's not blending in right for you, what you can do is either dip back into your original base color or just wet your brush a little bit more and then work it in. You could always use clouds too if you wanna cover up things. What we're trying to get away from is having just a real bold line. We want the sky to be nice and soft. Feel like a nice hot Hawaiian day. All right, we've done some blending, but also we can add in some clouds. So to demonstrate this, I'm gonna use white for these clouds, but to demonstrate, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys on this demo paper here. Set this up. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys with, um, with blue, just so you can see, but we're gonna be using white, so don't use blue. Um, there's a lot of different style of clouds. Now, for this style of clouds, uh, just play around. The great news is that if you don't like what you do, you can blend it in and then it'll kind of just disappear. So it's, it's air free. You could also go for just a sunny day. You don't need clouds, but I recommend you practice and play. And hopefully you have practice paper um, ready like I do, so you can practice here. So the key is using not a whole lot of paint. So you're gonna wanna take your brush and kind of wipe it out so you don't have a whole lot of white paint, not blue, 
and I'm just going to kind of tickle like this. So what I'm doing, the motion is this. I'm running my brush up and down, and I'm kind of pressing and lifting, pressing and lifting like this, and creating little squiggly shapes. That is literally it. Um, you can also do a second motion, tapping, tap, 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 and kind of tap over some of those squiggly shapes. If you tap hard, it'll make it really fluffy. So you can add some fluff to, a top, uh, to the top of some of those lines. Do, 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 just like this, squiggle, 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 zigzag. Press and lift, press and lift, tap, 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 tap. So practice a little bit if you're scared to do it. But again, um, especially with this step, you can always erase it. Paint's very forgiving, especially acrylic paint. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse my brush here. Let's dip into white. So dipping in my white, I'm gonna dip into it. I always scrape it out before I start. And I'm gonna put the majority of my clouds here at the bottom, kind of like they're nestled in the horizon. So press and lift, press and lift, zigzag, squiggle, 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 tap, tap, tap. It's kind of like a little dance. Make your brush do a little dance. I think mine's doing the YMCA, something like that. Tap, 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 tap. You see how faint that is? I do keep my brush really damp for this step too. Um, that'll help your clouds look more translucent. And again, it's so much easier to add more paint than it is to add less. So just use, or excuse me, it's always easier. You know what I'm saying, get so involved in painting. It's always easier to add more paint. Please use less. Okay. All right. Got some clouds. It's really easy to overdo clouds. <laughs> I do it all the time because I get really lost in them. Clouds are one of my favorite things. I think maybe for a future video, um, we will just talk about clouds for like an hour. <laughs> okay. Boom. We have some clouds in our horizon. Okay. So we're going to rinse out our brush. And we are ready for our ocean. Oh my gosh, so I'm already gonna need some more white paint. Always have more, like a ton of white paint. I have never painted any painting that wasn't black light at least, that didn't use white paint. You're gonna use like three times as much of this color as you are any other. So white paint, you're gonna need it. Okay, so we got our white paint. We are gonna mix with our big brush once again about two big scoops of white. I kind of just pumped out how much white I need. So maybe that's like the size of a quarter or a little bit bigger. And a half a scoop of blue and a half a scoop of that dark green or phalo green, which is also the hardest word to spell in the whole world, phalo green. Okay, let's mix it together. Two. And you should get this beautiful teal color. I like to keep this ocean on the light side in this one. So I like to use kind of heavy white, but I've done this color a million different ways just by changing a little bit of how much green or blue or white I want in it. So everyone has their favorite ocean color. Um, maybe yours is more of a deep Pacific blue. Um, mine is this bright kind of tropical -y ocean color. So that's what we're gonna mix. I'm rinsing out my brush. All right, we are almost, we're gonna now, excuse me, finish filling in the entire painting. So go ahead and dip into this color we have just mixed and start with your horizon. Now this is where you do wanna get your line pretty straight, but also notice we have some things cutting into it. So you are only gonna see little chunks. So if you really are focusing on one area, getting uh, straight on that horizon, focus on the right hand side. Step in. Okay, we did it. I think that's pretty straight. Let's see. It helps to take a step back. I'm gonna try not to put my back to you too much. I'm gonna take a couple steps back when you're looking at it. It's really hard to see what's going on in front of your face. Really, I, when I'm painting or developing, I step back I, with every single step and look at it from different angles and see how it changes, okay? Now let's get our, or our uh, beach line. If you did it a little big, I felt like I kind of did today. You could cut into it. Whoop. 
if you want, or just paint above it. You're not gonna see it because you're gonna cover it up with rocks and foam. All right, we got our two lines. Let's paint in between them. I'm gonna keep this nice and smooth. It's really important with this particular painting to keep your whole background nice and smooth because we're gonna have a lot of texture in our rocks, in our trees, in our ocean, everything in between. So try to keep this background nice and smooth. Get a damp brush. Long brush strips. Long brush strips. This is the most satisfying part. Just painting big areas of paint. Getting those sides again before I finish filling it in. So I got a nice smooth transition from the middle of the canvas to the edges. So this is really similar to the sky in that we're going to rinse out our big brush, our big flat brush. Keep calling it big brush just to make it simple. We're going to dip into our blue again and you're going to take this and we're not going to really blend this in. This is like our deep water. So let's get that horizon again. Long brush stroke. Don't work in little brush strokes. Use long brush strokes. It's going to just make it look so much cleaner. And then we're going to fill it in maybe eh, like a half inch or so, just a little bit. Now I'm going to leave that pretty bold. I'm not going to really blend it in. And yes, your background is going to be really wet when you do this. So it's already going to blend a little bit just because we just painted it. You know, it is important if you're doing blending to try to move fast. Okay. So we got that in. We are going to add our first layer of sea foam. Now, um, we will do more later, especially after our rocks are dry. So this is just going to be our first layer of sea foam. So let's go ahead, rinse out our big brush. Actually, let me back up. You could use your big brush because this is the same thing that we did with the clouds. Um, but I think I'm going to experiment with a little bit more deal, uh, detail. I'm going to move to the square brush. So those two brushes are interchangeable. Okay. Okay. Let's see how long I can or how many times I can load up white paint and do it again. Oh. But you know, that's how we preserve our paint. Just, just keep grabbing a little bit more so you don't waste a lot at the end. That's always so sad. Okay, so let's dip into white. And we're not going to do any foam until we hit about the bottom of that backwards S shape. So if you can see, it's going to be right about there. So this is exact same as before, just like you did with your clouds. Tap, 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 tap. Zigzag. Tap, tap, tap. I'm not blending it in. I'm leaving it kind of squiggly. This takes a lot of practice. For some reason, this step is always like the hardest because the easier the thing is, the, the more we try to overthink it, it is not to be overthought. It's just kind of pretend like you drank too much wine or something and you're like not really paying attention and you're writing a letter or something and just scribbling. It's scribbling. That's all it is. Scribble, scribble, scribble. Scribble, scribble, scribble. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, tap, tap. And, um, I'm going to kind of, as I go up about a couple of inches, I'm going to stop bringing it all the way across. I'm going to focus on this right edge, so right here. And I'm going to just tap and squiggle. And I'm going to stop when I get about halfway up my ocean. And I know that's really light for you guys at home to see. Tap, 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 and squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. And let's focus some taps only where we started our foam at the shore here. So you can tap a little bit into your water. You can spill a little bit onto the sand. Sometimes if I really want it to look like, you know, there's some water kind of being pulled back, like the wave just splashed, it's being pulled back. We have a little bit of 
foam mixed with that ocean color. You can get a tiny, tiny bit of that ocean color on your brush with the white and kind of just bring it onto that sand a little bit too. That way you can see some of that sand poking from behind, but it looks like we have a little bit of the water washing up on shore. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit more foam here now that I added in that water color. Probably gonna finish by rinsing out my brush. That was a big thing for me in the beginning. I was really lazy about rinsing out my brush so all my colors would kind of blend together. Newsflash, we blend all your colors together. It's a really ugly color. You're just gonna get like a grayish color. So just take my word for it. If you don't, just mix them all together when you're finished painting. And don't do it right now. <laughs> okay. All right. We're gonna touch it more foam later. So it should feel a little incomplete right now. This is just the base. So don't worry about it. So believe it or not, that's our entire background. That's it. So we're gonna now take a little break, maybe let it dry. Uh, when I did the original, I did paint all the way through. It's, we're gonna start with our lava rocks next, and it is okay if they have some ocean color in them. But um, let's let it dry a little bit. Pause the video. Have a drink of wine. Yes. All right. So, <laughs> because my apartment's like 10,000 degrees. Um, mine's already pretty dry. That's how fast it dries, especially if you're painting on Maui. So that's why it's important to move really fast when you're doing paint blending. So now we're gonna paint our rocks. I'm gonna use my square brush. You can say goodbye to the big brush, the big flat brush. We're gonna use the square flat brush with a medium sized flat brush for this next step. So I'm gonna grab two scoops of black. So again, a scoop is like this, two scoops of black and like a half a scoop of brown and mix that together. A little painter's tip, um, professional painters you'll see like never just use black on their own. They always add a little bit of color to it. So. I don't know really the reason behind that. It does look a lot better though, if it's not just flat black, if you just add a little bit of tint to it, okay? So we've got that. Let's rinse out our medium-sized flat brush, wipe it through that paper towel, and we're gonna make our rock outline. It doesn't have to be exactly like this. It could be whatever you want. Um, rocks come in every shape and size, yes? Um, but my word of advice is that when you go to first do your image, it's not gonna be perfect. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna play with it and it's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger and pretty soon it's just gonna like be too big. So start a lot smaller than you think you want it and then you got a lot of room to grow. So we're gonna start right in this nook right here. And we already have, we're gonna paint this rock right here. So from the bottom of my S shape, I'm gonna stamp and I'm gonna pull a line out. It's like a couple inches long. I'm gonna pull to the left a couple of inches. So I've got this, it's not perfectly flat. It's got a little wiggle, but again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I have room to grow. And now I'm gonna make any sort of rock shape over the top. So I'm gonna stamp on the right edge of my line. I'm gonna bring it up to touch the top of where this curves. And then I'm going to bring it down. Maybe you could do like another lump or two. All right. So that's a shape right there. We're not going for perfect yet. We're going to do our rock back here. So rock that's behind this one, and they will blend in for a while. You'll see in a minute. You're going to stamp at the top. You're going to wiggle and you're going to pull all the way to the left edge. You're going to stop when you hit where the ocean touches the sand. Perfect. Now let's stamp maybe like a half inch above your first rock, right about here. It's probably the most tedious part. And you're gonna stamp, we're creating our cove though. And you're gonna add a little wiggle and you're gonna pull out about like four inches or so. 
So we've got our first rack, we've got a line above and a line below. All right, from the edge of this line, let's move along it maybe two or three inches and then move up about three inches. Actually, a lot more than that. We want to move up until we're about a half inch above the horizon. So let me back up. Let's move over like three to four inches and up until you're about a half inch above the horizon. We're gonna do a dot. We're gonna work on this rock face right here. And we're gonna make this kind of square shaped, or I am, it could just be wiggly. There's no real rules here. So I'm gonna kind of stamp down and create a little cliff face. I like to think like that's a rock I might go hang out on, go mermaid watch it. So I'm gonna pull down, so I'm about an inch below. And then I'm gonna kind of come out, and do some wiggly or square shapes and connect. Okay, and now we want to fill in this line. So basically we're going to create, keep creating these mound-like shapes and we want to duck below the water and come back up, duck below the water, so on and so forth. So stamp and just play with it. It's going to end up different every time. I'm going to go down again. I'm not going to go down even further. The key here too is making things look really uneven. If you have a very repetitive shape where everything comes down on the same level, you notice all of my lines are at different levels. That's gonna really improve the look of this painting. Okay, I don't know if you guys can hear that motorcycle. <laughs> Part of the issues of painting at home. Okay, so maybe I'm gonna go really low this time. We'll come back up. I'm going to end with another little cliff face up here. Maybe this is like the edge. There's some beautiful house over here. Something secret you would want to adventure to. All right, so we have our basic shape um, for our big rocks. So we're going to basically fill it in, but here's the trick. You're going to want to start on these edges, and if they're really smooth, if you've created a lot of like just kind of flat lines, you're going to want to add a lot of wiggle. So you can come in here and add some wiggle. Or you, you could paint that initially too. And then we're gonna add texture later on. So for now you could just fill it in or you could kind of scribble to fill it in. Let's fill in the back rock first. Stop when you hit this one, then we'll fill in this front rock. They will blend in a little bit right now. Don't worry about it, we're gonna fix it. We're gonna add in all of our rock shapes and then we're gonna add in a little bit of color and texture. Okay, I could always make this bigger if I wanted to it's too wiggly, I'll make it taller and smooth it out. There's no rules to painting. It doesn't even have to be realistic. In fact, it's a little bit more fun if it isn't. Okay, build it in. Now let's fill in this smaller one right here. We have some rocks. Let's add our, our outcrop down here so we can complete our cove look. I'm gonna start with the bottom. So for my bottom right corner, I'm gonna go up about an inch or so. Make sure you leave plenty of room that you have a cove area. You can stamp by creating kind of a wiggly line. And let's bring it out like an inch or two beyond our shoreline. And let's create any sort of, well, wiggly rock shape right here. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Okay, let's build it. Anything you like. 
Okay. Now this is a little boring on its own. We're gonna need some more little rock shapes here or there. So there's a few things we could do. Let's start with almost, this is something I'd use if I was doing coves in like a distant island. So let's start by, um, you stamp on the bottom of a rock and you stamp and pull like a very squished U so that the bottom, it's basically a line that runs parallel to the bottom of the rock. So stamp and pull, stop your brush. Pull, pull my hand down so you can see. And now bring it back the other way. Whoop. And then you can kind of just wiggle some round shape over the top. This is kind of fun when you get used to it. Don't overdo it. This could be coming from either direction. I could be doing one this way too. Let's pull maybe just a couple of three, uh, a couple of these, like three or four, um, in some of our rocks. Pulling in different directions. I could pull a long one underneath that one. Kind of wiggle it. Okay. Some little Kobe shapes. Okay, beautiful. Now let's create some rocks scattered around. So we're gonna do some down here. You can do some right here, some in the middle. And these are basically just little baby shapes like we started here. So I always start with the bottom. I add a little bit of wiggle and then I'm gonna create any sort of rounded shape on top. And let's just make some different size ones. Easy to overdo this too, so do a few scattered around, make sure they're different sizes, different shapes, different heights. They could be tall and round like this. They could be really flat, squiggly like this. It's all about just doing different things. The more random, the better. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. and fix it as I build stuff. All right, maybe I'll do some down here at the bottom. A little wavy rocks here or there. Okay. I usually like to play music feels kind of weird not doing it, but YouTube told me I'm not allowed to, so. Oh well, it is what it is. Okay, there we go. Okay. We have made rocks. And they're not gonna look finished right now. I always get to this step, I'm like, ah, this looks silly. It should, it's gonna look silly until the very end. Okay. So let's create some definition in these rocks. Now, if you have just a tiny bit, I mean, I have like almost none left. I mean, you can see my sand color. If you have a little bit of that sand color left, that's great. Um, if you're out of it, go ahead and mix maybe like a little half scoop of white with a tiny, tiny dip of brown, yellow, and pink in it. It doesn't have to match your original color at all. Now this color, white is a bully color, white um, if you make a mistake, let's say you splatter some of your black paint in your beautiful ocean, what you want to do is let it dry, let it dry, um, put white over the top, let that dry, and then you could touch it up with the color, like white works as white out. But um, if you have white in your mixture, you're going to paint on black, it's going to take over really fast. So just a little bit, and I just want to add a little highlight to some of my rocks. So most importantly is this rock down here, because we've kind of lost it. So let's get that edge back. And how I do this, I kind of outline like this, and then I'm gonna squiggle to the left. Squiggle to the left. Okay. Could do the same thing with any of these rocks. Kind of outline, squiggle to the left. If that takes over too much, my recommendation would let it dry. As if you try to fix things too much when it's wet, um, it's just gonna get muddy. And if you're like, ah, I don't know what you mean by muddy. Oh, you'll know. That means it hasn't happened to you yet. It's not that pleasant. Now, 
On my little rock down here, I could add some layers. Like, I could make this rock jetting in. That was a little heavier than I wanted it to be. It's okay, we'll fix it. Just kind of outlining this lower rock here. I'm gonna squiggle. So we're adding this anywhere the light would be hitting. In this painting, I'm envisioning the lights kind of coming from over here. So instead of outlining, if I have a big rock face like this to make it look a little bit more realistic, I'm gonna jump around a little bit. So I might just add a couple of dashes. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And then I'm gonna pull from there or squiggle from there. And keeping my squiggles squiggly a very squiggly painting. I don't think I realized that to begin. If you have a really large blank area like this, just like we did with this lower rock right here, we could add some more little shapes, like there's some layers or crevices in this rock. You know, make it look nice and rocky. This is going to still feel weird because we have more colors to add. If you have, let's see, a little like shape that we did here these lines coming out of the bottom highlight those maybe bring them up into the rock now we got a little kind of hill shape and of course don't forget to add a little bit here and there i'm just literally pressing my brush into the top of a few of these rocks keeping my paint to the right side of them because that's where our light's hitting I guess that's not true for this lower rock. The sun's coming from here, so if it's coming from here, the light would be hitting here on this rock. It's gonna be hitting the top of this rock, so kind of just sticking to the tops of this lower area. All right, isn't that lovely? Oh, so lovely. Okay. Okay. Ah, this is where you can get in the going one brush stroke too far zone. I am about there. That is where you're, you look at it and you're like, oh, it looks pretty good. Maybe I should add some more stuff. Um, that is a danger zone. It's gonna happen to the best of us. Happens to me all the time. Just make yourself stop. Make sure you stop. Okay. So our next color we wanna add in our rocks. This should be our last color. But you could always go back in if that was too, if you're done with that, you could add a little bit more black, more sand. Just play with it. Pause the video, take time playing back and forth between these colors. So we're painting a lightning fast speed here. Let's do some brown. And I'm kind of gonna focus working this color just below my sand color. So anywhere you add that sand color, just touch a little bit of brown. It's gonna appear really, really bright as first. Um, as that paint, the water in the paint starts to evaporate, that color is gonna darken. So even when you're painting on black, if it's like, whoa, whoa that's so bright, um, just let it dry and then you'll see. It's probably gonna not be so bright and you might even wanna add in more. Okay, this brush stroke is really, I am doing the same thing as the foam, as the clouds. It's really the same sort of thing. I'm just kinda, Lifting my brush, pressing it down, squiggling, all that good stuff. Okay. A touch of that everywhere. I like making this kind of a more bright painting. But it is supposed to be lava, you know, so lava's pretty dang jet black. At least over here. get your little rocky areas over here and if that brown takes over too much just grab some black and spread it out like I just did I went over the lines a little bit that's perfectly okay you know the sometimes when you're painting you will have an accident and then you have to figure out how to fix it not only is that a good brain challenger but usually your painting will end up even better because paint works in layers so um, I went over the line here, so now I'm gonna, or not now, later when the 
dries. We'll add some foam right there. You're not even gonna see it. So don't be afraid to make mistakes in painting or in life. It's always a good lesson and you're just gonna get better and better every single time. Okay, so you got lots of brown. Looking good. You might wanna come back to it later um, and add in more stuff. For now, I would probably let it dry so you don't overdo it as we're just really adding some tints of color. Do you notice I say don't overdo it while I grab more paint? It's just how this works. Um, but let it dry, see how it looks then. You can always come in and add little light, take a step back, make sure you have good lighting in your house as well. Fluorescent isn't so good. Yellow light is much better. All right. So we got this. We're going to add some like little grass and stuff to it too. Um, but we're not going to do that quite yet. So let's take a break from foam. We're going to take a break from the grass. We're going to talk about palm trees. Yes. The dreaded palm tree. <laughs> I have a lot of people say they're not that into it. Okay. I want to start with a color very similar to my sand color. This is the only time I'm really going to use that round brush, that medium sized round brush. So um, if you have a little bit, actually the best thing you could do is take a scoop of brown and add a scoop of the black. I said sand color, but I meant your rock color. So take a scoop of brown and maybe add a little dip of black mix it in. We want to go for a really dark brown, not as much a black. Now really important with this step that you rinse out your brush and you're going to kind of spin it like this through your paper towel. So spin it through your paper towel. Okay. Now start small with your trunk. It's always better to start small and then you can kind of feed that line. I'm going to be using black to show you right now so I don't use up that color I just mixed. So start small with your shape and then you're going to feed that palm tree so it's as thick as you want. Now I see palm trees come in all sorts of shapes. We'll talk about that in a minute. So the, when you press lightly down with your brush, right, you get a skinny line like that. You press down hard, your line is going to be really fat. So when you're doing a palm tree, it's easier to start with a couple of dots like so. Oops, I'm going to actually make this dot a little lower. And I'm going to start at the top with a tickle and I'm going to stand down and connect. Now I like my palm trees to be a little wiggly, but you could paint them, you know, bowing this way or this way. They could go anyway. I see some palm trees do this. Woo! I've even seen palm trees do this. Okay, so whatever it is, your palm trees out there. So once you have your line, then you're just going to leave that top nice and skinny, kind of feed that line, fatten it up until you have your desired thickness of palm tree. Okay, so mix in a little bit more paint here. If you haven't rinsed out that brush and you have a nice pointed edge, if your brush looks fluffy, you're cheating yourself out of creating a nice line. Okay. So we're going to dip into that color we just mixed, find it, roll your brush so those bristles stick together and make sure you leave enough room for a palm tree. So the best thing you can do is use your fingers like a claw like this and kind of hold it up where you want the palm tree. You kind of want it in this middle area here somewhere. Let's do a dot. In my example, that's about like four inches over, about three to four inches down. And then you want that palm tree to be coming off the edge right about here. So about the middle of your canvas. So you can hold your brush, kind of play with it to get an idea of what angle you want that palm tree to come in. Take note, you're not going to see it, um, the bottom at least. Place a dot. Now we can make our shape. We can kind of bow down and out, whatever. Also, if you do something and it's like really like not what you wanted and it's going to be really hard to fix, like this would be a little harder to fix because I have so many colors that's on top of. Immediately get a, a wet paper towel, dab it, dab it to get all that paint off and then wipe it off with another 
wet, uh, damp but clean paper towel. You can actually erase this paint completely if right away you don't like something, if you move fast. Um, but make sure you don't like it. Don't be overcritical of yourself. Even the very best painters have bad painting days. You're like, I don't, there's some days I don't even know how to paint at all. I'm like, what? I swear I've been doing this for a long time. Maybe I just need to dance today instead. <laughs> okay. We have the trunk. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of detail to that trunk too, but not quite yet. If I did it right now, that paint would just come right off. Okay. So now we're going to do the top of the palm tree. So use your square brush and rinse it out and squeeze it through that paper towel. And we're going to do something called double loading. It's a cheat technique. That's where you get two colors on your brush at the same time. So with your square or medium flat brush, lay your brush one side, flatten your green, and flip to the other side and put it in brown, or excuse me, in yellow. Rinse out your brush if you listen to me, making sure you guys are still awake. Okay, so one side in green, the other side in yellow. And I'm gonna start with a dot at the top of my trunk. That dot is important because you're gonna pull all of your branches from that dot. If you kind of let that dot get away from you and you start pulling your branches, whoop, they're gonna kind of get higher and higher and it's gonna look a little bit more like a pineapple. So we wanna pull all of our branches from the same place, from the same dot. So green and yellow to start. We get a lot of yellow on there. Um, if your sky is really dark, maybe use heavier yellow than green. And if it's really light, heavier green than yellow. You want it to stand out. I think. So this particular palm tree has only seven branches. So I would do a minimum of five branches. Um, maybe start there and then maybe add in more as long as you pull from that dot. So stamp and you're gonna pull out and down two low branches. I'm gonna try to keep these lower and middle branches about the same length. You could always use your pin pincher fingers to measure. Okay, I'm gonna stamp on that dot. I'm gonna pull a couple branches out of the side. And I'm gonna stamp on that dot. I'll pull a few at the top. This is where you can make kind of some shorter ones. You could kind of get the different lengths towards the top. Okay. That's a good place to stop. I wanna make enough room to actually add the leaves on that palm tree. So let's take a moment and rinse our brush out. Sip a, sip a wine. Give your mother a kiss. Oh, that's so nice of you. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> virtual kiss if you have to. All right. So, we got the dark green and yellow double load on our brush. And I'm going to paint the leaves. Actually, let's show you an example here. So, the leaves, no matter where the branch is, the leaves should go with the branch. So they wanna go with the branch. So usually I start, I, you could start the inside or the tip. I prefer starting on the inside. I think it's easier to explain from the tip though. So I'm gonna start there. You just experiment and see what works for you. Stamp, you want the tip of the, the leaves to be really tiny. And you're gonna stamp and twist your brush, stamp and twist your brush like this. And they're gonna curl with that line. And I press and I lift, I'm gonna press, I'm gonna lift, I'm gonna press, lift, press, lift. And they're gonna get longer and longer and longer as you reach the middle. A lot of times when you're painting, you might go over the line, but that's perfectly fine. Just stamp and paint a little bit above it. And that's exactly what you want. Uh, it can get a little confusing Sometimes, oops, I got white paint here. At the top, if you have a branch sticking up like that, that can be a little confusing. So always just start at the tip if it's confusing and just make like a little hook, just a little hook. And now you know which way to curl. You're gonna know instantly if you go the wrong way because it's gonna go like this. See how that edge is flat versus this is curled? So don't do that. 
Um, now, I also painted this two different ways. I'm gonna hold this up and see if you can see. So this way, I'm using the skinny edge Ooh, of my brush, the thin edge. The other way, I'm using the fat edge. Do you see that? So it's two different looks. It's not wrong, no matter what you do. Um, a lot of times, I bounce between the two. I'll kind of get some like, use that fat edge to get some um, shape in there. And then I'll just add some like little frilly things. Take that example out of the way. I think we're done with it. Okay. So I got yellow and green. I'm going to start at the tip. It doesn't matter where you start. These branches could overlap. So you might want to start at the bottom because that's where more overlap would be because the branches above it would be overlapping the bottom. I'm going to stamp and make my hook. I'm going to start with the skinny edge of my brush. because That's what I'm feeling today. I, ch I change my mind all the time. Every time I paint a palm tree, it looks different. Stamp, stamp, curl, curl, longer, 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 finish with an outline. Stamp, curl. I'll start from the inside this time. Why not? Curl, 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 perfect. I'm gonna keep doing that all the way up. Take your time here. Press lightly. I just noticed like a lot of times um, when we're painting something delicate, I do this too, I'm gonna grit my teeth and I get like frustrated and I like press really, really hard. It is really like, as lightly as you can press that brush on the canvas, that's what you're going for. So pretend like you're tickling it. Ha ah, ha, just tickle, 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 okay. Perfect. Got a couple more branches. See, this could be a little tedious. So that's why it's nice to start with less branches. Tickle, tickle. Make sure if you have a lot of gap, I don't know if you guys can see, like in here, you really want the thickest part to be where that branch and the top of the palm tree touch, and then it to like thin out at the base of those leaves. So it's kind of wispy at the bottom, but pretty filled in where it touches that line. But take everything I say with a grain of salt. If you mess up and you don't have enough room like here, it didn't really get skinny. I can always extend my line like that. That's why we always start small. Now take a look at your palm tree. Rinse out your brush probably. Do that often, especially if it ever gets dry or fluffy. And also, I'm very used, I never use that much paint unless I'm trying to fill in a large area. Okay, so with the yellow and green, um, actually, we're gonna bounce between yellow and green on their own. So this is kind of at your own discretion. Um, maybe add in both colors on their own. My, for mine, other than this first branch, I felt like my green really took over and I didn't get a lot of that yellow. And that yellow highlight is what's gonna make, uh, make it look like that sun's hitting your tree. Got some light in there. All right, so now I got yellow. So I'm gonna just add some highlights of yellow throughout it. Maybe on the top of the branches, if they're not standing out, um, you could add a highlight there. Now, I wouldn't really outline the whole thing. I would kind of press my brush, get a little bit on there, lift it up. So I'm adding just some dashes of yellow. Looking good? Do you 
love palm trees or hate them? <laughs> I felt like, even though I'm filming this before you guys are watching it here, hey, because a lot of people don't like palm trees. I think they're fun. They take a lot of practice, though. So, again, practice on your paper. Paint it a couple of times, maybe before you paint it. And then when you feel like you're good, um, go for it. Okay, so we got a nice little happy palm tree in there. Let's move back to our trunk. We're going to finish it off. Use your square brush. So every brush is interchangeable and there's lots of ways to use them. Um, we've been using our brushes so they're nice and like, um, you know, pressed together. But for this step, I want my bristles to be separated. So separated bristles here. I want it kind of fluffy. So I'm going to take my finger and kind of fluff it out. And I don't want to use very much paint. You could dip into white or brown or your sand color. I'm going to use a little bit of sand. The key to this step is hardly any paint on your brush. So dip into your color, scrape it out. Again, I'm using that sand color, but if you're out of it, use white or, or brown. I'm going to add in brown too. I'm going to start on the right edge, and all you're going to do is make overlapping smiley faces. I'm going to show you here on the demo paper in just a minute, bigger, so you can see. So I'm going to stamp, I'm going to make overlapping smiley faces. This is a very little thing. All the way down. If you want to see this up close, just wait one minute. So I'm going to show you again. I'm going to wipe out my brush, make sure it's fluffy. I'm going to dip into my light brown, or my only brown. <laughs> Every time I reload paint, I just get, scrape it off my brush. And I'm going to go the other way. Okay, so let's show you that motion on the paper. It's like this. So bristles are separated, it's this. Let's hold it nice and close so you can see. Scrape, scrape, stamp, pull overlapping smiley faces. I'm stamping on the edge of the tree. I'm using the fat edge of my brush. Getting these little brush, little brush marks. Now we got palm tree rings. You know, if that ends up awful, your, um, your original color will paint right over the top. You can always take a little bit of black on your round or your um, medium-sized flat brush and just outline one side of the tree. That would be a perfectly uh, reasonable way to do that. Okay. So dipping into green and yellow again, I'm going to tap in some grass and some bushy shapes. So you can make your bushes on this right side of the rock. You're just gonna tap, 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 tap. I'm not really giving you any guidelines on the size. This is really free form. Just start small and see. And you're gonna wanna get away from real blocky shapes. So you're gonna tap, kind of wiggle out, go in. You could overlap part of your palm tree if you wanted. If it's getting too dark, grab a little bit more yellow. Get a happy little bush in there. <laughs> then you can kind of tap, 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 and tap some rounded shapes over it. Tap, 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 tap throughout your rock. Probably be towards the bottom of the rock. Or you could kind of work this color into, let's say I have, I have kind of these little crevices. I have this rock overlapping the bigger one, so maybe there's some grass in there. I'm just tapping. And the harder you tap, the more rounded your shape is going to get. But there's another motion you could do. Flick. Flick, flick up. That's gonna add little patches of grass in shape. So tap, tap, tap. Get your base down. Just pick a couple places and do a couple flicks. Just do a couple flicks. Tap and flick. Yeah, you're gonna mess up every time. I just did that grass. I don't like it. So guess what? I'm gonna erase it. Now I got maybe a tree, a really tall bush, some greenery, whatever you want to call it, over there. You can add some to your little lower rock if you want to, but not necessary. Don't overdo it. I'm going to leave these guys just lava rock pretty much. Because they're not really, they're kind of just jetting out into the ocean. Okay. We have made some grass. Hopefully you guys can see that. Keep working on our lighting as we move along here. Okay. This is, should be a short step. I'm going to rinse out my square brush. Really, really 
good. Oh, I'm running out of napkins. Best to probably keep a whole roll of paper towels by you. Okay. I'm going to use that flicky brush technique again that we used for the rings. So take your, your medium sized flat brush, flick it. We're going to be using white. This is foam again. So dip into white, kind of scrape it out. And we're going to be tapping again. So mainly I want to tap at the base of some of my rocks. You don't want to outline all of them. Just pick a few spots where waves are crashing. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, tap, tap. If you felt like you didn't get enough of that um, uh, foam to begin with, you can, this is where you change it and add some bright white colors. Tap, tap, tap. Remember where I messed up earlier? I can fill in here. Tap along the base of my rock. Maybe make that foam go out a little bit. Just like you did with your grass. You're seeing probably a lot of repetitive motions. You can flick, 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 flick in a V shape. And then tap, tap, tap. Now I got some extra crashy waves. Okay. Tap a little bit more here. You don't really want to tap, you know, into your sand area. Okay. We got some more waves. We got some crashy crashies. All right. So there's one more step. Now you, I'll use my round brush. This, these are our birds. So you could also use a sharpie if you got one. I always keep a sharpie handy. I like to sign sharpies. Okay. Um. But again, you decide. So if you want to do this little bird shape, I'm gonna paint it nice and big for you. You're gonna use just. Um, that probably that black mix or you could use straight black but again I would say it's better to use a brown mix take your brush rinse it kind of squeeze it make sure it's got a nice pointed edge and let's cover this up for a quick second here these are the this is the way I like to do birds I stamp a little line I'm gonna paint it nice and big though so you can see so I make a line you know, if you're doing multiple birds, this line could be going in either direction. And then you're going to stamp in the middle and pull like a V and then pull out from that V. I probably did this line too big, so start really small with that. Stamp a V and pull out from it. It looks pretty much like a bird from far away. So again, this is such a delicate thing. If you do not have a good round brush or a nice pointed, like if you have even a tiny brush, I'll probably work even better. Um, just use your Sharpie. You don't want to like go this far with a painting and then have this big black blob. But if that happens to you and you hate your bird, don't try to fix it when it's wet. Dry it. Paint white over it. Paint your sky over it. Then you can fix it. Okay, so my brush is nice and pointy. I'm using very little paint and uh, maybe make them different sizes and at different levels. I'm going to paint a few dashes in there at different heights. They're all kind of different sizes. I'm going to paint up and out, up and out. Press as lightly as you possibly can because these will get chunky real fast. Now if you're painting a lot of repetitive objects, especially when it comes to animals like birds or a lot of whatever you might be painting something goes on it's also a bird um you probably have a favorite you'll have a least favorite so that's okay maybe one of your birds got a little wonky don't be too hard on yourself well party people believe it or not you're to your final step signing your masterpiece yes so use paint or sharpie congratulations so um Traditionally, an artist signs in the bottom right-hand corner. We have a lot of dark rocks, so either sign a lighter color, or you could break the rules and sign over here, if you like. Um, and that's it. So once again, I'm so happy. Thank you all your all the moms out there for joining us and for painting your first masterpiece. Yay! <laughs>
<laughs> this is a cause for celebration. Yes, I'm so happy. So again, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Sheep. Um, I want to give a special shout out to my amazing mom, Sandy, and to all the other amazing moms out there. If you're watching this at the time of airing and you uh, wouldn't mind leaving me a tip, I do have a link below. Um, that would be so kind of you. And also, I forgot to mention earlier, if you're watching this at the time of airing, we're doing a little contest. If you post your um, pictures that you painted with me today or maybe this week, we'll do the drawing next week, um, you might win a free Island Art Party tote and cup. So isn't that awesome? So please post your pictures, use our hashtag, hashtag Island Art Party, and we can um, share those and uh, it'll be so much fun to see what you guys created again. And then we'll mail you your own Island Art Party mug and tote bag. So um, also, as always, if you wouldn't mind liking, sharing, subscribing to Art by Sheep, I'm going to be posting a lot more fun videos and not just art parties, but live art parties and tutorials as well. So stay tuned for more content. I'm going to be putting it out every week, <laughs> at least for now. Um, and please stay tuned. If there's something you would like to see in any of my future videos, please let me know in the comments. I'll be checking them and I'd love to hear from you to see what you would like to learn about painting. And again, thank you for joining me from my living room to yours. <laughs> scared her. This is my dog. I'm just a dog mom. Um, <laughs> so please keep on painting, dancing, being joyful. And again, have a wonderful Mother's Day. Thank you. Mahalo and goodbye.